What we're going to be working on today is creating an animation from different costume changes for our sprite. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to File, and we're going to create a new project. And you can call it whatever you want. For my purposes, I'm just going to call this one Music Video. And the first, you know, I guess the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get rid of our little cat sprite. So if you right click on it and go to Delete, we can get rid of the cat sprite. Now we're going to add a new sprite from the sprite window. You may have your own sprites already with costume changes. Uh, I'm actually going to choose one from the library. And I want to use one of the ones that is a vector-based sprite. And you'll see what I mean in just a second why I like my vector-based sprites. Now again, if you already have your own sprites and you've already made costume changes, uh, you'll just want to work with uh, whatever sprites you want to work with. So I'm going to go over to Vector Base Sprite, and I am going to pick um, a lot of different good choices here. I'm looking for the duck. The duck's a good favorite of mine, so uh, bear with me a second. I know our duck's here. There he is. Okay, so I'm going to pick the duck and click OK. Now, if you've done costume changes before, you can kind of skip past this portion of the video, but... If you are interested in doing some vector-based costume changes with some of the animated sprites that are already in Scratch or some of the ones you can download, uh, you can follow along with this part. So uh, we have our duck here. We're going to go over to the costume change area. Now he is a little bit small right now on the stage, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see the different parts of him. Now if I were to click on the duck, I get the arrow, or excuse me, the box all around the outside of the duck. I actually want to click on this button right here, which is going to do what's called ungrouping the sprite. And when I ungroup it, it is now made up, this sprite is now comprised of individual parts, meaning that I can make any changes to the arms, the legs, and sometimes even little parts of the eyes. You'll notice as I click on them, I can make individual changes. So. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be simulating animation, or actually making animation through just small changes in the costume, maybe three or four different costume changes for the sprite, looping them together so that it actually makes it look like the sprite is animated. So in order to do that, we are going to duplicate the sprite, and then just begin the process of making some subtle changes. So here we'll just make a change to the arm, we'll make a change to the leg, and these changes can be ever so subtle. And then once we've done some changes, we're going to duplicate it again and make just a couple more changes. Again, nothing too drastic, or it may appear as though our sprite is jumping and not really dancing. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time so that I have four iterations of my duck and again you can when, when you're working with vector based sprites each box or each part of the animation has the ability to make these changes so uh, you can really get down into uh, some very subtle and small changes for each one okay so I've made my four costume changes for my duck now I'm ready to go begin putting it together and adding some music and making my duck simulate uh, his little animation or, in my case, his dance. So we need to do some coding. So I'm going to go back over to my script tab right up here, and I'm going to begin to put the script together. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create what's called a procedure. And if you're not familiar in computer science or programming or coding with what a procedure is, is a procedure is essentially a set of instructions. So I could tell you, go get two slices of bread, put peanut butter on one side, put jelly on the other side, put them together, cut it in half, put it on a plate, serve it. Or instead, I could just tell you, go make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Well, that's what a procedure is in coding. You're basically going to put together a set of instructions, but you're going to do it in a block of code that you can then call by name. So in order to do that, we have to make our own custom block. So we go into more blocks. And we're going to click on make a block. And we're going to name this block. Well, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call this block dance because my little duck is going to dance. 
So I hit OK. Now at this point, I need to make the code changes so that my duck, you know, both runs through the different costume changes and does so with a certain frequency and repeats. So there's a few different pieces of code that I need to add. The first one I need to do is I need to go over to looks and I need to do show. And I drag this show in. So that's going to show on the stage. The next thing I need to do, uh, well, I don't need to do this, but, um, well, I think it's it's probably a good thing because uh, the duck is a little bit small on the stage. So we're going to go over and we're going to set size and I'll make the size just a little bigger. So anything above 100% is going to be bigger. So I make it 150%. So that's going to make the duck a little bit bigger. Um, another thing I can do is my duck could be off center on the screen. So if I go to motion, I have another uh, method I can pull here called go to. And if I drag this in here, I can sort of center the sprite on the screen, entering any of these X and Y coordinates into the procedure that I'm defining. So I just put in there, go to, and then set an X and Y, and negative 25X and 25Y, just kind of some random numbers that I put in uh, that will put the, the duck, the sprite, onto a spot on the screen that I like. Okay, so we've set the size, we've set where it's at, now we need to go and add some controls and add a repeat. So if I go to control and I find repeat, you can see that the default is 10 times. So this is how many times the duck is going to do something. So I've told it, whatever you're about to do, do it 10 times. And here's where we're gonna go for the costume change. So I go back to looks and I go down to next costume. So by calling next costume, Basically what we said is, okay, 10 times I need you to make this costume change. But there's one other thing I want to do because it'll do that really, really quickly. And if it does it so quickly, I'm not quite going to get the effect of the animation and it'll just, it'll happen so fast I'll barely see it. So I need to put a little bit of wait time in there. And I do that under scripts, under control, and you'll notice that there is a wait now, I don't want to wait one second or it'll look really, really choppy and definitely not look like animation. So I can use decimal um, decimals before this and I can say, you know, wait 0.2 seconds here. So we've defined our procedure. We're going to show our sprite on the screen. We're going to make the sprite a certain size. We're going to put the sprite in a certain location. Then 10 times we are going to make the sprite do a costume change. And then when we're all done, we want to go back to looks and we want to hide. So in order to see what that looks like, if I click on the define dance, and you see it happens pretty quick. It's also a little bit choppy, so um, I can play with these numbers, I can play with these variables, and so can you. Uh, so if I go here and I go repeat, say, 20 times, which is actually a pretty good multiple since I have four costume changes, but I want it to happen a little bit quicker. I'm going to change it to wait 0.1 second. And you can see the differences when I define it now. The sprite is moving faster and a little bit more smooth. So if you're working with vector-based sprites and you really want to get into the animation and make very subtle changes, you can go in and add as many costume changes as you want. So at this point, we have now set a procedure to make the sprite dance or animate. The next thing we need to do is we need to basically be able to call this procedure. And if we're making a music video, we're going to need to call a bunch of different procedures for any of our sprites that we want to incorporate into the music video. Also, at the same time, we need our music to play. So in order to do that, we need to go over to events and we need to add an event. And the event that usually starts the program is this when flag is clicked. So I'll drag when flag is clicked down into my script box and I'm going to add a an event excuse me I'm going to add a control and we're going to add a loop and basically say forever for now and you could you could do this 10 times you could do this 
uh, forever. You can do it as many times as you want. Essentially, for our testing purposes, I'm going to say when I click the flag, forever, I want you to call this dance. And while that's good, I also need you to play the music that goes along with my music video. Okay, so if you've already worked with sounds, if you haven't worked with sounds, um, if you go over to the sounds tab, you can add the song. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to upload my song, which I have downloaded. Okay, so I took a, a second to skip in the recording a little bit while I loaded my song. So my song is here, and it has been loaded under Sounds tab. I'm going to go back to my script, and now we're going to call the song to play. So when the flag is clicked, forever play the dance loop, and now we also want it to play the song that goes along with it. So I play the song here, and now it's going to continue to play you know, forever this animated dancing sprite. So you may also want to find that you want to go in and add a control that makes it wait. So maybe your sprite takes a break from being on the screen for a little bit. Maybe it's 10 seconds. Maybe it's one second. Maybe you only want your sprite to show up at the beginning and then wait a minute, then come back later. Um, you know, at that point, you may also decide you want to define a completely different procedure. So uh, the last step of this, I'm going to just test out my work and see how I did. <laughs>